Welcome to Ditch the Classroom. This is your host, Ariana Vernier, and I'm so excited that you're here. I'm a teacher turned business coach who is so passionate about helping fellow mamas like you ditch the classroom and pursue your big, hairy, scary dreams. Imagine a life where you could still impact the world, but do so while following your passions and spending more time with your babies. In Ditch the Classroom, we'll explore ways you can do just that. Myself, guest experts, and amazing teachers who have also built a successful business will share tools, tips, and resources to help you ditch the classroom too. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode. I'm really excited because we have another guest on this episode today, and we have Megan Katchigan. Did I say that right again? Okay. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> she is a direct response copywriter, um, was a teacher for 10 years, and now does this full time. So we're super excited to have you today and learn from you today. Megan, welcome. Thank you. So excited to share with you all. Yeah. So I like to just kind of hear your teaching journey, just because I know 95% of our listeners are teachers. So could you share with us what grades you taught, how long you taught, and all of that? Yeah, so I taught high school physics and math for 10 years um, through a different, few different schools. And honestly, I really loved it. I like right out of college, then I got my master's in education um, and jumped right into teaching from there. So um, it was funny because like I was still pretty young when I was teaching high school seniors in physics, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was so much fun. It was so great to connect with the kids. That is what I definitely loved the most about teaching and probably was the hardest thing about letting it go. But it was such a beautiful journey. And like over the 10 years, I got to coach. I got to help out with student council, ASB type things. Um, and really just, yeah, developing that bond with the kids and, and seeing them. I don't know. They're just so hilarious. <laughs> that is definitely what I've loved most about teaching over the years. Awesome. So what what really led you to want to ditch the classroom? Yeah, that's good. So it was not an easy decision because I did love teaching so much and still do. But I think I felt that like I wanted to keep growing professionally, but I didn't want to become an administrator or a principal or anything like that. Yeah. (laughs) And so like I loved being a teacher in the classroom, but I also felt like there just wasn't that much room to keep growing or like to go from there. So that was really hard for me. And, um, and that's what I felt like going on my own and doing my own copywriting has really allowed me to do so well as like to really invest in my own personal and professional growth. And like, there's no limit to, to how much I can accomplish or the income I can make or the impact I can have um, now as a, as a copywriter. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I mean, mine was mostly impacted by wanting to leave my daughter, or leave school to be with my daughter, not to leave my daughter. Mm-hmm. But I kind of felt the same too. Like I felt, I felt capped, like you said, on where I could go. I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of room for growth unless you went into admin, which I mean, teachers got a lot going on, but so do admin. <laughs> I have no, no desire to be one of them. So yeah, mm-hmm. I totally feel you there. So Can you share a little bit about your journey from like deciding, okay, I want to do something different to where you are now? Yeah. So as I was getting this itch to like, I think it's time to leave or like I've, I've done my time here. Um, I was like, then it's like, well, what else am I, am I going to do? I've been a teacher my entire, you know, professional life. So it was just a lot of a lot of journaling it out. And like, I knew I had always wanted to be a writer, like from a young age. Um, But like when I was younger, I thought like being a writer meant like being an author and writing a book. And like, that didn't really necessarily feel like the right path for me in this moment, like maybe cool down the line. Um, But, but not in this season. And so it was just a lot of like, okay, I want to write, but how can I make um, you know, a real living from that. And, and copywriting was just the best answer 
to that question, um, to like to make it sustainable and fun and something that I really enjoyed and was passionate about. And as I learned more about copywriting, like it just blends a lot of psychology and it's both like, it's an art, but it's also based on a science. So people are like, wait, you're going from teaching physics to writing? Like that's quite a leap. They, they don't seem similar at all, but they actually are a lot more so than, than people would initially expect on the surface level. Um, so copywriting is basically like you're writing marketing materials for businesses. So you're writing their emails. They, they send to their subscriber list or their website or sales page, things like that. There's just so much psychology in there. And then like, you're also looking at the data, like what's getting opened, what's getting clicked, like what's working and what's not. So it's, you're like, you're really using the scientific method there um, to figure out like, okay, well, like, let's try writing about this or taking this angle. And so it's not just like following your intuition or like hoping for, you know, the muse to show up for your writing. Like it's, it's, there's formulas and there's techniques. So there's a science to copywriting that, um, that makes it work so well. Yeah. And I think you said, as far as analyzing the data, teachers are really good at analyzing data. I mean, we do that all day long and tweak our teaching to match where our students are at. So you can, you do basically the same thing when you're a copywriter, you know, you want to, you want to be connecting with the people who are reading the content you're writing. So you want to make sure like, based on the data, what are they liking the most? Yeah. Like in both teaching and copywriting, it's like, how can I meet them where they are at? Like not where I want them to be, but like, where are they at? And then like, how can I take them to where they want to be? Yeah. So both as a teacher and a copywriter, you're doing that same thing, but in a, obviously in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I first started in the freelancing world, I was like, what is a copywriter? Like copyright infringement? Like what is it? So I'm glad you explained it for us that I know it's a lot of not the legal probably, thing that's different. Yeah. <laughs> copywriter as in W-R-I-T-E-R. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So are there any resources that helped you take the leap out of teaching? Yes, gosh. And I feel like at the beginning of the journey, it's so overwhelming because there's so much out there Mm -hmm. um, and especially so much free stuff. And I would say at the beginning, like, yeah, consume that free stuff, listen to all the podcasts, but then like find out who is for you and then like buy their online course or invest in them as a coach. Because yeah, you can consume the free stuff all day long, but like that's only going to move the needle so far. Like if you really want to see results in a time frame that's going to make a difference for you, then you need to invest. I started with online courses and I read books by like all the copywriting greats, like the legends out there. Um, and then I invested in a coach and that is really what like skyrocketed and accelerated my success and made this doable to where I could keep working from home, making a full-time living. And I, I don't even work full-time hours. Yeah. Investing in yourself can be ridiculously scary, especially the first time. But like, sometimes you just got to rip that bandaid off. Cause like you said, you need it to really excel and build yourself to the level you can get to. You can only do so much when you're like DIYing, trying to soak up all the freebies. Like you need that Mm -hmm. extra support to just push you, keep you going when you, you know, have a little bit of imposter syndrome creep in. I think it's really, really, really important. Yeah. Like I didn't know how much I needed it until I just took the leap. I was like, oh shoot, this is a big investment. Um, and then I was like, well, I got to do it. Like I'm stuck. I need, like, let's see what this can do for me. And I'm so, so glad that I did. And yeah, I just couldn't recommend it enough. Yeah. Same. But it is scary. (laughs) (laughs) Terrifying. Yes. But you got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah. So what does your average day look like now? That is a good question. Um, I know it might so, be kind of crazy with COVID going on. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, so actually, the great thing about COVID is that it actually didn't change my day to day all that much because 
I'm still working from home anyways. I was before COVID and I am during COVID. So it didn't really impact me. Um, in fact, it actually just highlighted how much copywriting is so necessary and is such a secure career career to have because when businesses are flailing, like that is when they need a copywriter to connect the message to their audience so that they are still like buying their, their products or their offers, their services. Mm -hmm. Um, So even like the harder times get like the more necessary copywriting is. And like, that's the lifeline, like the lifeblood of any business. Like if you become a copywriter, like you are necessary one of my clients had to cut like a team of 12 down to like a team of three. And the copywriter, me, was one of the people she kept like out of that big cut because like you can't, <laughs> it's so hard to operate without a direct response copywriter. Right. Yeah. You guys, you're crucial. So how many, like just an estimate, how many hours a week do you think you work? Good question. So it varies by the week. I would say on average, maybe about 20 to 25. Sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's 30, but I never do a full 40 hours a week, partially because like the way, I mean, it took a lot to get here to like stretch my schedule, optimize my calendar and all like the backend systems to make everything operate in a, like the most efficient way possible. Mm-hmm. But I love that stuff. Like I'm so in like a personal growth junkie and systems <laughs> and all of that to, to make my life easier. And like part of the reason why I wanted to do this is be, like to live my life first and not have to design my life around my business or around work and to be able like family is a huge value and priority for me. And I really wanted to be able to make that first. Um, and so now I get, I can do my work on my own timeline. I don't have to, you know, be in the classroom by a certain time or I'm off at a certain time. Like I get to choose my own hours and it allows me to be present to where I'm called to be in that moment. So like, if I need to be a mom at a certain moment (laughs) during my day, like I can be a fully present mom. And then when I'm ready to work, like I can be fully present to my work. And I'm just so grateful. Like it's a both. And like, I don't have to choose to be a full-time stay at home mom. And I don't have to choose to be, you know, I'm going to be a full-time career woman, but I can have both at the same time and be fully present in those matter, those moments that really matter the most to me. I cannot agree more. I think you don't, you don't live your life just for work. You work to live your life. So you want to structure your work around what's most important to you. And like you said, for a lot of us, a lot of the people listening for myself, that's, that's your family. That's your spouse. That's your kids. That's Mm -hmm. what's most important. And teaching doesn't always reflect that. Like you have to spend way too many hours in the classroom and you come home, you're exhausted. You don't have the energy, the patience for your own kids. So that was something that that was really important for me, too, is structuring this business. Like if I need to, I can take a break and deal with my grumpy kid or just like (laughs) give her a little more quality attention. And then when she's like settled down, I can get back to working what I was working on. It's it's really for most days are easy to balance both and make sure that she's my number one priority. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I love the balance too, because like, I love what I do and I love the impact that I get to make both in and out of my home. Like I love what I do and getting to work with clients. And I feel like a part of me would be empty without that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like if it was all work, a part of me would be empty and missing, you know, being home and being present with my family. So it's, for me, it's just been the perfect balance of not having to choose because I really do love both and I get to have both. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, this is a question that I love to ask on every podcast episode. And it's, if someone wanted to start their digital classroom journey, but they just felt too overwhelmed, what would you tell them? Ooh, yeah. So it it is overwhelming. (laughs) So yes, definitely validate that that is a normal feeling to have at that stage in the the journey. Um, And it is a journey. So I would say that like, just take it one day at a time. And like, I started as a side hustle, like I did it in 
Um, like I would find the margins in my day to make it happen, to learn what I needed to learn, to be a good copywriter and to make it into a business. And like the whole business aspect is a whole nother side of it. It's like, you don't have to just be a good writer, but you have to be a good business person too. And I didn't have any training in that. So it was a huge, huge learning curve, but like, if you want it, you'll make it work in the margins of your day. So like for me as a teacher in my last year, I was also a cross country coach. And um, so I gave up coaching and I used that margin. So like my school day ended at three and then between three and four, I would, you know, consume the the online course content or start pitching clients um, and, and working it on the side. And in, in that, like, I really just maximized that one hour a day that I had. And then I would like four to five, I would go to the gym, five o'clock, I would be home and ready for dinner and, and, you know, close close out the work for the the evening and be present. So it's just like, like three to four, I remember it was just like my golden hour. I was like, I am like, normally like I'm so exhausted after like, especially as an introvert, like I love being in the classroom, but like, shoot, it wore me out. Same. <laughs> and like, I was so exhausted during that hour, but I wanted this so bad to like, see if I could make it work for myself, that it, that is what energized me. Um, and so like, find those margins of the day, like whatever it is for you. Like, if you have to get up early, get up an hour early. For me, I found it in like the middle of the day when I was usually like ready for a nap or a caffeine boost or, you know, whatever it is. And so I was able to find uh, that margin to make it work while still, you know, being still do fully doing my job really well as a teacher and fully being present to my family when I got home. Yeah, I think be especially trying to, to balance the two when you're maybe still teaching and trying to start this to build it to the point where you can ditch the classroom, you have to be, like you said, really good at managing your time. And you don't need huge chunks of time to really get get a good chunk of work done. Like you said, you just had an hour to, a day to build your business. And you can even find like 15 minutes here, 30 minutes here. Like you, it's not like a normal nine to five where you have to sit down and work for eight hours straight in a row. Like you can find, you can fit it into what your day looks like. Yeah. And it's almost, you're like, you are more productive when you have less time because there is no time for you to, you know, dilly dally or, or whatever. Like, you're like, I have got to get this done. This is the only time I have to do it. If I don't do it now, then like, I'm not making progress towards my dream. So like more is at stake and it forces you to, to really maximize what you do have. And even if it's just 15 minutes a day, like don't discount what you can do in 15 minutes. Yep. Like if you have an email template, you can email, you know, a few people like for your, their, your services or do a post saying this, Hey, this is what I offer. Like there's so much that you can get done even in just 15 minutes. Yeah. Amen. Again, <laughs> you got all the good, the great nuggets in this episode. So I'm loving it. So do you have any resources of your own that you'd like to share with my audience to help them with their digital classroom journey? Yeah. So if you are interested in writing, copywriting in particular, but I also post um, or share business tips as well, that would be super helpful. Even if you don't think copy, like if you don't want to become a copywriter, like no matter what you do, you're still going to need copywriting as a skill to to keep your business alive. So um, I would invite you to join my Facebook group. Um, If you type in the Facebook search bar, copywriting for coaches and course creators, you'll find me there. And there's a whole bunch of resources and posts and videos and freebies to get you started. Like, if you're like, how the heck do I do this copywriting thing? Why do I need it? Um, everything is there for you so that you can get started um, and you can feel free to ask questions. And I will personally get back to you, especially, I don't know, especially as teachers and just knowing my journey, I just have a huge passion for, I don't know, it's like a way I can still be a teacher without being in the classroom. So I just have a huge passion for helping people get to where they want to go and live the life that they want to live because I'm like, I know it's possible because I've done it. um, And I just want to make that journey easier for other people because gosh, it's tough, but it's so worthwhile. Yeah. Yep. 
I completely agree. You, if this is, if this is a dream that's on your heart, I always say like, it wasn't put on your heart for no reason. Like you're, you're meant to pursue it and you just gotta, you just gotta take that step. So I really appreciate you sharing that resource with my listeners. I will make sure to drop that link in the show notes. So if you're listening, you can find it really easily. And then where is the best place for our listeners to connect with you, become your best friend, get to know you more? (laughs) Yeah. So Facebook and Instagram are the primary places where I will hang out online. So you can catch me there at Megan Catchigan. And then you can check out my website too, which is just MeganCatchigan.com. Perfect. And I'll have those links in the show notes as well. Yeah. Well, say hi. I love connecting with other teachers. (laughs) Perfect. Awesome. Well, I am so grateful for you coming on today. I think this episode is full of so much goodness for those listening. So I just want to take a second to thank you for coming on and taking the time out of your day to share your wisdom with us. Yeah, so grateful to hang out with other teachers and former teachers and you guys are my people. So awesome. Well, Thank you to everybody who listened today, whether you're a new listener or you've been around for a while. I just really, really appreciate you. Make sure to, if if you really are loving this show, make sure to take a screenshot of the episode, share it on your Instagram. Um, If you're listening to this episode in particular, take a screenshot and tag me at ariana.vernier and Megan at megan.cashigan. And again, All the links will be in the show notes for y'all. So thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Bye guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Before you go, make sure you take a minute to subscribe to the show, leave a rating and review and check out the show notes for a free gift to help you ditch the classroom. If you love today's episode, can you help me share the message by taking a screenshot, tagging me on Instagram at ariana.vernier and sharing it with your friends so we can help more mamas ditch the classroom and follow their dreams. Until next week, y'all, keep following the dreams that were placed in your heart so you too can ditch the classroom.